Hey girl, what's up? So this is Shania, you guys, and I have Stefania on the other line. Um, she is dope, killing the game. Um, you know, some people, <laughs> some people may not know who you are. So can you give a brief introduction of yourself? Um, you know, I would do it, but you know, I have a few more. I have a few questions <laughs> I want to ask you, so I don't want to kind of spoil your introduction with my questions. Um, so yeah, definitely give us a little introduction about yourself, um, and yeah, we can go from there. All right. So my name is Stefania Ergumlitza. Um, I guess I do socials. I don't know. <laughs> I do Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitch, pretty much anything, Twitter, whatever I can get on. I'm on all socials. Um, I make basketball content, but I also kind of focus on uh, fitness and kind of lifestyle as well. Um, a heavy focus of mine is like social justice and female empowerment. Um, but you know, I, I, I'd be taking some boys on the court too. So <laughs> <laughs> well, and yeah, that's um, pretty much like everything I do right now. Well, that was a very humble <laughs> introduction. <laughs> um, so, you know, Stefania's killing the game. Like she said, she, you know, she's focusing on, you know, woman empowerment, um, social justice issues. And that's going to be a lot of what we're talking about today because, you know, the stuff that you're doing out there is not going unnoticed. So my first question for you um, is, you know, about basketball. So basketball seems to be a big piece, you know, of your life. When when did you notice your love and passion for the game or just basketball in general? Like, did you play basketball growing up? Did it develop over time? Kind of tell me, like, how you got into basketball. Yeah, so I have a really weird kind of backstory on how I started basketball. Um, so when I was born, I was actually born with clubbed feet and like my whole legs were actually turned in. And so they told my parents, you know, she's never going to walk. She's never going to run. She's never going to play sports. None of that. And so they had to put me in cast for the first three years of my life. Um, and so every Tuesday we were going to North Philly Shriners hospital and we were getting a new cast put on to try to straighten out my legs. Finally, after three years, you know, we straightened them out. Doctor told my parents, you know, maybe we'll get her walking with a lot of therapy, but like, she's never going to play sports. She's not going to run, nothing like that. So basically my parents were like, no, <laughs> that's not going to be the case. And, um, they put me into every sport possible, including, you know, basketball. And for me, it wasn't really like a choice. Like, I think everybody always asked me like, oh, like, how'd you get started? Like, you know, like you love basketball so much, like how did it start? It was like, I didn't really have a choice <laughs> when I started. It was kind of like, yeah. okay, you're going to do this or you're never going to really be able to use your legs the right way. So, you know, I got into basketball that way. And then I just kind of became a gym rat. Like my parent, I have immigrant parents. So, you know, like we were either, I was either with them working, you know, at school or on a basketball court and they would just kind of leave me there and I would just play like all day long by myself. Or like if there were boys around, uh, I would just kind of start playing like little games with them as well. And uh, I just started, you know, the love grew. <laughs> I started kind of getting yeah. into it more. And um, I think another kind of weird part of my basketball journey has been the fact that like I didn't ever really play. Like I never played high school. I never played college. Um, but I just loved the game so much and, you know, pick up was a big part of it. So like street ball was really like my main, like source of basketball in my life. And, um, yeah, it just kind of grew from there. And I guess I, now I do what I do. So it's kind of cool to see the journey. Yeah, that's really dope. Um, it's, it's crazy you say that because, you know, my mom, she played basketball and, she had three kids young. So she had three kids by 19. And, um, you know, she, her, her basketball dreams kind of got cut short. So she made us play basketball. So I was kind of <laughs> forced to play. Um, but the difference, you know, I can relate so much because my love for the game started with just like being in the gym. My mom would run so many basketball tournaments, like every weekend throughout the week, you know, at night, um, we were in the gym, like literally in the gym. So I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to make the most out of this. Like having this mentality young though, like, you know what? I'm not in here for nothing. Like I might as well start <laughs> yeah. working on my game or something. And literally my passion for basketball came from, you know, being in the gym, 
all the time. Unfortunately, yeah, I was forced, but I, I decided to make the most out of it. And some people don't have that in them um, to kind of, you know, make the most out of their situation. So kudos to you for sure. Um, yeah, I appreciate so, you. I wish we had met when we were young. I would have had someone to play with. That. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, recently with all of, you know, the tragedies going on in the world, you decided to make a stand for the Black Lives Matter movement um, in order to be, bring people together. I'm sure there's other social uh, social justice issues that also have started your, you know, basketball journey. How did the idea develop? And can you give us some of the uh, states that you visited along your tour? Yeah, so like last summer, probably like not this past summer, but the one before um, 2019, July, I started taking a hoop around Philly. So it was really like random at first. I, you know, I was sitting there and I was like, what do I want to do? Like, what kind of videos do I want to make? And I guess I just decided, I was like, you know what? I just want to play people in the street. Like I've always been about street ball. Like I think I should just order a hoop. So I literally like went on Amazon and I'm very random. So like if I decide to do something, <laughs> like I just do it. So I went on Amazon and I found this basketball hoop that was like a hundred something dollars. And I was like, all right, this isn't too bad. You know, like I'm going to order this hoop and like, we're just going to take it around Philly and like play with people in the street. So I literally called up my video guy and I was like, Hey, I ordered a basketball hoop. And he was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, like, we're, we're going to take it around Philly and like ball with people in the street. And he was like, like, what? <laughs> then I like hung up on it real quick because I didn't want him to tell me no. So like hung up real fast. And then he, he ended up coming. So like, you know, that was good. And um, so we started doing it around Philly. And like the first time Meek Mill like kind of pulled up, he saw us like just playing on the side of the street. And he was just like, all right, like, let me go play with them. So he pulled up on us um, and it went really well. Like the way I saw people come together was just a really cool experience. And like, I just, you know, I saw that and I was like, you know what, like when the Black Lives Matter movement kind of started and, and the protest started, um, it was kind of like one of those things where I had seen what my hoop had done in the past. Right. So like I had seen how it had brought people together and like, what kind of energy it had it had created and the ability to unite people through sports. And so I kind of just decided to take it out of retirement because, you know, Corona hit. So I wasn't planning on really like balling with people like that for like the extended time. Right. until <laughs> like, kind of keep your over. COVID over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I had like, you know, retired the hoop. I, I didn't think I was going to bring it out for like the next year or two years or however long, you know? So when, uh, the protest started, I, I realized like that this was the one way I knew how to bring people together. And this is like the one way I knew how to like create any sort of change through sport. So, you know, I took the hoop out. Um, we did Philly first and then we've done so many since then. <laughs> uh, we we did know. Philly first. <laughs> yeah. Philly, we actually did it twice and well, I've done it in the past too, but for the protest, we did it twice. And then we did DC. Then we did um, Minneapolis. So we went to like where George Floyd was killed. Um, yeah. Then we did uh, LA twice. Then we went on a whole hoop tour. So like those were like individual, like those were just like, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And like, it wasn't really like a tour or anything. I just was like, I wanted to do it. Cause I, I, I kept seeing how like, you know, like the response it was getting and like how people were really coming together through it. So, um, when I decided to do the whole tour, we ended up doing, I think it was like an 11 city tour. Um, we did Seattle, Portland, Philly, DC, um, Kenosha, Wisconsin, Atlanta, Miami, <laughs> uh, New Orleans, <laughs> uh, Houston, Austin, Vegas. And then we did like random stops in between. So like we, we did like Grand Canyon and White Sands, New Mexico and stuff like that. But it was a really long tour. And, um, I was very tired at the end, but I was very happy with, with everything that yeah. we did. So I'm happy that we did it. 
Yeah, that's so amazing. Actually, I think the way we even got in contact or like connected uh, via, you know, socials was the fact that we were going to kind of get together and, you know, do this whole hoop thing. And I think Philly at the time. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, you know, being on the other end and just, you know, seeing you accomplish something so great. Uh, I don't think people understand how like, amazing it is how dedicated you had to be to you know kind of do it regardless of the outcome like you're making a stand and you know you're fighting for what you believe so that's awesome um so my Thank next you. thing is you know you were featured on sports center espn news and many other media outlets recently but from my understanding you you already kind of touched on this um you've been walking around you know the city with a hoop for a while and you just said going on you know almost two years essentially um so how does it feel for to, to kind of see your hard work pay off and see that you are influencing so many people around the world? I think, you know, people throw the word influencer on, you know, people like us with a blue check or, you know, certain amount of followers. And, you know, they don't understand, you know, what an influencer is. So, so to kind of like see that you're actually influencing, like we're not the typical, you know, Instagram model out there that's considered an influencer that, yeah. gets paid to post clothing and stuff like that so you know to actually be an influence and you know to kind of see your vision come to light you know how does that feel um because like you said you've only known hard work your whole life so seeing something finally pay off and get the acknowledgement that it you know it needs um you know can you kind of touch on that a little bit yeah so a few things about it you know first of all like in terms of like influencer right <laughs> I think a lot of times, you know, it's true. Like there are people that don't really use their platform. Right. But like when I initially started doing socials, like it was for the purpose of what I'm doing right now. So like I realized that in order to create change, like I actually had to have a voice. And so I've been very strategic and like everything I do is very, you know, planned out. So like, I I didn't just decide, you know, like I want to be like famous, you know, like I want to have like I want to be a basketball girl that like people like watch on YouTube or whatever. Right. Like I kind of went into it with the the intention of like I want to be able to impact people in the like greatest way that I can. And so like, how do I do that? Right. And so, yeah, when I like look at my like profession I guess of like being an influencer like I think in order to actually be an influencer you have to create like you have to have influence like you have to actually like be doing something with your platform you know like not just posting pictures of yourself but like what can you do to help people and so Mm -hmm. you know doing like the hoop stuff has been really cool for me and like having people kind of acknowledge it at this point is it's definitely really cool like um I think another part of that is like people usually don't like to talk about positive things that they do. Right. Because like you you never talk about like cool or like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like people are like, Oh, like you're talking about like the positive stuff that you do, but it's like the more positive things that are talked about, the more people like start to realize that doing something positive is cool. Right. Like, yeah, honestly, less negative happens, you know, the more positive you are. Um, So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, if I do something positive, that might trigger you to do something positive. Right. So like for me, like actually having people acknowledge what I do at this point is kind of cool because it's like, I know that now like young females especially are looking at me and they're like, if she can do it, like I can do it, you know, and like people who maybe are coming from like the underdog experience, just like me, like they're, they're thinking the same thing. So it's not just yeah, necessarily sure. about like having that acknowledgement, but it's also like being able to have the ability at this point to kind of be proof of concept for people like where they see me and they're like, Oh, like she did it. So like, I'm going to do it too. Or like, she's doing such like positive things. Like, let me try to do something positive. And like, I think yeah, more like along the lines of inspiring people to do more good is, is what I've really appreciated about this whole experience. And like, having people really acknowledge everything that I've done. Cause you know, I've been working and like, I'll keep working no matter what, you know, like it doesn't matter to me if, if ESPN picks up my piece, like I'm still going to do it, (laughs) you know, but like, yeah, for sure. 
push that that impact forward and have other people be inspired by it and be able to like go on their own and create change on their own too like that's really where i think the value is there yeah and and i think it's you know it's so wonderful that you're showing you know young girls like you said like okay street ball doesn't have to be a man thing you know what i mean like yeah. i think the concept of street ball is literally okay you know you go to your local park in the hood and you know they're playing street ball out there like no like you don't have to take basketball, you know, to the next level professionally, because honestly, the chances that a young girl is going to make it to the WNBA is really rare because, you know, the WNBA needs a lot of work um, compared yeah. to, you know, NBA. So I think kind of showing, you know, young athletes too, like this is also an option as well, even if, you know, you're still pursuing your dream with basketball or sports or whatever, but you're also doing it in a different way where, you know, you're influencing people to just be positive, you know, maybe get out the house, come join together, unite, like stand for something. Um, so, you know, that's definitely amazing. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like what you said, you know, for fitness with me, um, you know, I helped my mom lose over a hundred pounds. So I'm like, if I could help her, like, <laughs> What's, what's stopping me from helping other people? Um, and it wasn't until I kind of grew that mentality where I was like, you know what, I'm done posting, you know, bikini pics or I'm done posting pics that I thought people wanted to see. Like, I'm going to post what I want people to see. And I want to post what, you know, I'm going to post what I want people to know me by. Um, yeah. so, so, you know, like I'm definitely there with you with, you know, putting out positive things on social. Um, yeah, but, Shana, you know, too. it's like with that, too, I think so many people want to like tailor their content to like what people want versus like telling people what they want. Because like, sure. like I've heard so, so many times people will be like, oh, like, you know, um, you should post content like that people like that they like. Right. So like if yeah. I'm posting basketball videos, they're like, oh, keep posting just the basketball videos. It's like, no, like. I'm going to tell my audience what they want to see. So if I want to start doing social justice, like I can just start posting social justice. Yeah. Maybe I'll lose some followers, right? Like I definitely lost yeah. a lot of followers when I started doing that, you know, but I, I was happy to get rid of those ones. <laughs> like, right. Ones like y'all need to go time. anyways. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Like those ones, they, they had to go anyway, but you know, it's like, yeah, I'll lose some people. But at the end of the day, like I'm dictating what I want to put out and like, at at that point, it becomes more of like my my channel and like my page and and my legacy versus like just posting things supposed to make people happy. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. You're definitely you know doing amazing at that. Um, but outside of basketball, uh, you definitely <laughs> are body goals for a lot of people out there. What do you, you do to kind of stay healthy and fit with such a busy schedule? Like, do you follow a specific diet, a workout plan? Do you just stay consistent in the gym, you know, and with your nutrition? Like, what is it? Because I'm, I, I look at some of your videos and I'm like, dang, like if I could have <laughs> those little cuts and the obliques and, you know, the quads, like, oh, okay. <laughs> but you're definitely, you know, what, what can you, if you can give anyone any advice or kind of tell them like, what you do as far as fitness, you know, with such a busy schedule. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anything, yeah. Yeah. I think the first thing is like, I, you have to also understand to people listening, like I, I've been doing fitness and like working out since I was probably like 13. So, and mm -hmm. it's been consistent and not just like, you know, not just training basketball, but like lifting weights probably since I was like 14, you know? So I was always kind of picked on as a kid, like lifting weights and like being in shape wasn't really like, you know, popular back then. And now it's like a big thing. But like back then, you know, like I've kind of had abs. I, I've had like body definition since a young age. So, you know, at this point, it's a lot of maintaining more than like it is trying to lose like weight or like gain weight. Um, cause I've been able to kind of go through different body types for myself and figure out what I like and what I don't like. Um, but it is a lot of consistency and, and honestly, a, one of the biggest parts is like diet for me. So like, I have a pretty strict diet for myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sometimes like, luckily I like vegetables, so it works out for me. And like, I like kind of more proteins anyway. So it's not really like, 
I have to like push myself, but it, it, honestly, I have to push myself to eat more, which has always been an issue for me. Um, mm -hmm. cause I thought like I was like eating the appropriate amount. Right. And then I learned from a nutritionist that I actually was eating significantly less than I should be eating for someone that does as much like exercise as I do. And yeah. honestly, like, you know, like eating more is actually something that can help people too. Cause my body was like storing fat because I wasn't eating enough, you know? And mm -hmm. so I think it's about like finding the right nutrition plan for you. For me, it's, you know, heavy protein and then also like double the amount of vegetables. Um, so I eat pretty much like a piece of chicken or turkey or fish every day with like a lot of like greens. So like spinach, broccoli, um, green beans, asparagus, kale. Every morning I have like this disgusting green smoothie. <laughs> it tastes so bad, but it's so good for you that like I have to do it, you know? Yeah. It's, I, I don't drink. So like, I feel like this is my way of like torturing myself, you know, when, when you know, when you take a shot of alcohol or something and it, it goes down yeah. bad. Yeah. This is like my way of doing that. Like my green juices or my green smoothies. Um, so it's a pretty like strict, I don't really eat too much carbs. I, I don't eat much sugar. Um, I completely cut out dairy at this point. I don't really eat bread as well. Like if I really want to, I will eat any of those things, but I have to like really, really want to. And then yeah. I go to the gym pretty much every day. Um, now I'm doing two a days. So I'll do cardio in the morning and I'll lift at night. But a, another big part of it is like lifting. I think a lot of times people want to do just cardio and yeah. cardio will only get you so far. Like cardio will help you kind of lose, lose weight, the, yeah, lose the weight, but it won't help you like really gain muscle. Or like, yeah. 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 Like uh, most uh, my legs, especially like that's not just from running. Like I remember I went on a strict like just boxing stint where I didn't do any lifting when I was in high school and I thinned out so much. <laughs> like I, my yeah. legs were like super skinny. So it's like, you know, a lot of it has to do with uh, lifting as well. And like lifting heavy and, and just having, um, you know, the right uh, workouts and then also diet plan. I think that's really, that's really what it is. Yeah, that's dope. Well, whatever you are doing, girl, keep doing it because you look amazing. <laughs> thank you. Um, so and, do you, though. You know, <laughs> thank you. I, but, I've been watching you and you're, you're killing it. You look great. Thank you. But yeah, people don't understand, like, you know, I've played sports my whole life. Like, yeah, my yeah. body is now changing um, because I'm, in, you know, intentionally working out specific body parts. But overall, yeah. like, fitness has been going on for 10 plus years of my life. So, you know, it didn't happen yeah. overnight. And I, th I think, you know, a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, definitely yeah. keep killing it with that. Um, so before we wrap up, do you have any upcoming projects that you're working on that you, you know, you want to share? If you don't want to share, you know, you don't have to. Some things are better left unsaid because people try to steal ideas, but um, is there anything <laughs> that you have kind of going on? Just more of the hoop stuff, honestly. And then I have like a whole female empowerment project that's kind of on the horizon. Um, just trying to work with more females. Like, I think a lot of times females compete and I I'm trying to get rid oh, of that. Yeah. Like, I, I want, <laughs> I want us to like work together to grow and like create more opportunities for each other rather than like compete for like limited opportunities. So that's kind of a, a heavy focus for me moving forward. Um, and then, you know, I, I started doing music now too. So I, I got some music projects on the way I have I just know. like my regular basketball content and lots of, lots of new things coming. So I'm excited. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, you know, like I said, and I've said multiple times before, you're definitely killing the game. Um, Thank you. and you, you know, Chris Brown actually just posted something on his page. I think, I think it was something along the lines of like all the girls that don't tag their friends in their pictures, y'all some haters. <laughs> but I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. I was like, you know what? Like there are very envious women out here. And if we all stuck together and built each other up, like we could be so freaking powerful. Like people don't even understand. Um, 
so yeah, you know, if you ever need, you know, someone to help uplift, empower, whatever, I'm definitely here for you. But other than that, can you tell everyone your social media outlets and where they can find you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch uh, at Stefania E. So S T E P H A N I A E. And then on TikTok, um, call me Steffi, C A L L M E S T E P H E. Um, other than that, you know, if you just type in my name, it's, it's really hard for me to hide <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> I got the craziest yeah. name ever. <laughs> You guys, she's being she's being a little humble, but she's definitely a boss out here. So you guys definitely check her out. Um, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day. I didn't want to keep you too long, but you know, definitely keep doing what you're doing. You're doing some amazing stuff out here. Um, keep yeah. inspiring, keep influencing, and keep standing for what you, you know, what you want and what you see. Because at the end of the day, you know, there's gonna be people that try to stop you. Um, but you have a pretty good head on your shoulders, so definitely keep motivating and keep being that person because a lot of people see it even though they may not acknowledge it so definitely keep doing your thing girl and thank you so much for tuning in thank you for having me